What is going on guys? Welcome back to another Last Epoch video. This time we're going to be going over to Lightless Arbor, which is the gold sink dungeon in the game. To start things off, if you don't know how to get there, just right click the key in your inventory and it'll show you the location of it on the map itself. Now for this dungeon, it'll have four difficulties, tier 1 at level 20, tier 2 at level 65, tier 3 at level 88, and tier 4 at level 100. As you can see, I haven't even done the tier level 88, and this is because this is a gold sink dungeon and you need a substantial amount of gold going in to make the most out of it. I would personally recommend around 2 million at least. You could probably get away with sinking even more into it if you want, you can sink less, you can kind of choose what types of drops you want to get at the end, and if there's something that isn't suitable for you or your class, you can skip it. Now, before I get into the dungeon itself, I'd like to ask you guys to take a second, like the video, subscribe to the channel for more Last Epoch content, as well as content for any other ARPGs and or MMOs in today's world. If you want to see that, please hit that subscribe button, it does help me out a lot, and I appreciate it greatly. We're going to go into the dungeon here itself, and this is the dungeon mechanic, so you have a hundred burning amber is what it's called and what this does is it basically mitigates the damage you take as you are progressing into the dungeon but if you take damage you will this number will go down and i'll show you guys how to refill it later on as well if you run out of this you'll be taking a lot more damage and that's not something that you want to do as you can see here i've already taken a few hits which brought this down to 77 damage now if i run and hit zero like i said i will end up losing it these monsters right here are what you want to kill once you kill those it'll go right back up to 100 and then you're free to keep progressing through the dungeon without really worrying about getting hit too hard once you get here you'll see this on the map and that'll be the entrance to the second floor if you go in here you'll notice that it adds some additional modifiers for the next floor that you go into the same thing once you hit the end of the second floor, you'll see on the map the exit to the final boss room, another health and damage modifier will be added for the boss itself, and then you can go in and fight the boss. Now before I get into the boss fight itself, there's one more mechanic that you need to know that you don't really use in the rest of the dungeon, but you will for the boss fight, is by pressing D you can move the torch to your mouse location. And what it does is during the boss fight, you'll see something called a kindling that needs to be light lit on fire. And that basically happens by the torch being close to it. So you can just leave your torch there while you run around and dodge attacks. I'll show you guys what it looks right now in the boss fight itself. So your first thing you're going to do is come here. You're going to destroy this. And then you're going to leave the kindling over there to light up the... Uh, Still try to stay somewhat near it, as you will otherwise take a lot of damage. You don't really want to do that until it fully lights up. And then you're going to move on to the other side. And you're going to do the exact same thing here. Just leave the torch over there. Again, try not to stand too far away from it, otherwise you will be taking a lot of damage. You also want to watch out for the tree's slams, because not only does he do big slams, he, um, he hurts. So once the kindling's lit, the boss mouth itself will open, and you can go in. Now here you don't really need to worry about the kindling much anymore, it doesn't really have any crazy attacks, you can kind of just sit there and tank it. The only one is this beam here where it'll, once you see it, you just want to move directly to the opposite side of it. Other than that, just try and dodge all of its attacks, and you won't really be having any issues. If you have a movement skill, you can always try and save it for that specific beam attack, and then you can just go directly behind it where it will not hit you. If not, just try to move casually towards the back of the location 
and then that's the entire boss fight. Once it's dead, you just pick up the drops, whatever you want from it, and then move on to the loot area at the end of the dungeon. Now, this is the part where I said you're going to need a lot of gold, and the reason is, and honestly, you can have an empty inventory, it will help, I don't really need any of these. Um, I'm going to keep those two though. So once you get here, it will ask you whether or not you want to add chests and certain drops to the loot room, and obviously it'll cost a certain amount of gold. So this will say like add a chest that drops many affix shards for 1300 gold, cool. As you can see, the more stuff you add, typically the more the gold amount goes off. Adds another chest for several idols, random chest drop with 45% more something. At a chest drop that drops many affix charts, so you're constantly adding chests. Now you also get these, which is like adds an additional exalted relic to every single chest. And as you can see, it ramps up a lot in gold. This adds another chest entirely, so you want that. All items from every chest have 50% chance to be doubled. Another cool modifier, why not? All chests drop 20% more. As you can see, you Unless there's something you really, really don't want, there's not much reason to um, not add all of them. Uh, there is a limit. I've gotten it to the point where it did cost 2 million, but I guess this time it was a little bit different, so you might get away with only having about 1 million. And then once that's done, you just enter the vault itself, and this is where you're going to get all your chests. And each one is going to have a tremendous amount of loot. As you can see, if you don't have a loot filter, this is going to be very uh, difficult to see. You get a lot of affix shards, and as you can see, it lags a little bit. So I highly recommend just kind of opening these one by one instead of um, just popping them all open at the same time. And then you're going to have a bad time trying to... Um, loot, and you also may... Um, crash your game accidentally and that's just something you do not want to do but basically that's it for this dungeon it's fairly straightforward the hardest part I would say is the first uh, phase of the tree boss just because if you have a low health build like mine that keeps you at low health he's just gonna hit you out of your transformation every single time he hits you almost and it's a pain in the ass so I do highly recommend um, more so builds with a high amount of health anyways that is going to be it for this video guys if you found this helpful or if you've enjoyed it so far please hit that like button subscribe to the channel for more last epoch content as well as content for any other games coming through this channel thank you all so much for watching and i'll see you in the next one